Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to define API errors in the Spring Boot based application. When we define the API, not only the success response, but the failure is also integral part of the application. Failure can happen because of any reason, it could be the system issue, it could be the data issue. While calling the API, if API is failing, then as a caller, you should be able to identify what is the root cause of the error. But for that, the error should be concise and also informative. At this moment, if you look at the response that I have of one of the API, it is a bad request. There is no information about this particular error. As a client, I will not be able to identify what is the root cause. Right now, we have one API and we are sending empty request to it. And then based on that request, we are getting the error. Here we have the create book API and it has the book DTO as the request body. With the request body, we have assigned the at the rate valid annotation. That means Spring Boot will validate this particular request. And within this book DTO, we have several attributes. All of them are annotated with at the rate not null. If any of the value will be null, then there will be a error. Right now we are getting this error, but it is not telling us what is the problem. It could be because of any of these fields. Whenever any failures occurs, Spring Boot application by default throws the error and that is being handled by the default handler exception resolver. It has triggered the method argument not valid exception, which is handled by the default handler exception resolver. If you look into the class, this is the method and based on the specific exception, it is triggering some kind of logic and based on that logic, we are getting this particular response. For changing this response, we need to implement our own class. First of all, we will define one class API exception handler. Now, this exception handler will handle our exception based on one of the annotation, which is at the rate controller advice. So whenever the Spring Boot application will load, it will also load the API exception handler as a beam. And this is because this controller advice is annotated with the at the rate component. How this class is going to handle our exception? For that, we need to provide one at the rate exception handler with the method and whatever type of exception we will define within the handler, it will handle that particular exception. By default, Spring Boot provides the response entity exception handler. And if you look into this particular class, this is an abstract class, but it has one implementation handle exception and it can handle these exceptions. Here you can see it has the method argument not valid exception as well. If we will start our server again, whenever this method argument not valid exception will be thrown, now it will be handled by the response entity exception handler. And I'll have to just restart my server. Now you can see it is coming to this response entity exception handler. And here we have the method argument not valid exception. Whenever this handle exception will be called with the specific kind of exception, it will call this specific method like here we have the method argument not valid exception and for that handle method argument not valid method is implemented and again it has the default implementation if i just run this you can see we have got the different error message but still it doesn't have the significant information now we have to implement this particular method in our class that we have defined if I just copy this in the API exception handler, we can implement it in our own way. From here, we need to return our own response. For our example, we have defined one response, error response. It has a couple of attributes such as code, message and field. We can have a fixed code for different kind of exceptions. This message will have the description of the error and then we have the map of string and string. We have this book DTO. Whenever any of the attribute will have a validation error, then we need to provide the information of that attribute. Like here we have author, journals, price, etc. We also need to provide the region of the failure. Like here we have not null and for the author we have provided the message author cannot be null. Similarly for other attribute we are dependent on the default message of the not null annotation. If the values are null that means we have this particular message that need to be added to our error response. So here you can see we have the exception within this we are getting one object binding result and within this result we have got target that is the book DTO this is the request body and within this request body we have the errors and here you can see we have six errors all of these errors are the field error this field error has the information like in the book DTO object we have field author it has the rejected value null because we have passed the null value so 
that value is rejected and then it has the default message author cannot be null similarly for other attributes we haven't defined our own message so it has the default message must not be null within this field error we have all the information that we need to add in our response let's implement the method and from here let's return the response entity and for that return new response entity and here we need to provide the body let's return the error response from here and then headers and status we can just reuse the headers and status from the parent method so this is the response that we need to return now we need to set attributes within the error response if we have the method argument not valid exception we can have one specific code for example let's say we have 100 code we need to set the message this message we can set from the error itself we will see what could be the problem but for now let's use get message then the final thing is the field here we need to provide the information of all the fields along with their error region we can get that information from the method argument not valid exception here we have the get binding result keep it in some variable from the binding results we can get the field errors we need to define one map from this error fields that we can do by applying the stream API and here we have the collectors to map. We need to provide key and value here. This is a stream of field errors. So from the field error, we can get key get field and then we need to return the message which we can get from the default message. Now this map we can pass within the set fields with this implementation. If we will run our server again, here now you can see we have got the response that is what we have built by ourselves we have the code we have message and then we have the field information within the fields we have all the fields which has the invalid value like for the price we have the message similarly for author we have got the message all the information is there now based on this information if i need to fix something while calling the api i can fix that only problem that we have is this particular message we have the complete package name of our input request then we have the controller its method this detail can be a problem in terms of the security of the application for the security region we should not send the server information in our response we can simply send the message like it is an invalid body instead of passing this message we can send the default message like invalid request body so now instead of the complete message it will only show this particular message we have one more scenario like we have the joiners and we have the language these fields are the enum field in our application we have the fiction value which is the supported value and instead of that if i just pass the random value similarly for language i just pass the random value so what happens let's see that instead of method argument not valid exception now we are getting the http message not readable exception here you can see we have got the 400 bad request earlier we fixed the response for our method argument not valid exception but now we have got some different kind of error this is what we have to fix we can implement this particular method within the api exception handler here we have the at the rate override and now we need to return the error response mostly this particular code will be same so i'm just keeping it in some method get error response and now we will utilize the same method over here as well in this particular case we can return our own code say it is 101 and then now we need to know how we are going to get field error and the message within the http message not readable exception there can be multiple other regions but for the time we have got the invalid format exception now within this exception if you can see here we have got the path within path we have the field name joiners and then it is also telling us what is the root cause of this particular error for this particular field we have provided this value but it is not the enum value from the invalid format exception we can just pick the path and from here we can provide the field value in this particular request we have joiners and language there are two fields but in the error it is only showing one value whenever we will get this http message not readable exception we can only handle one failure at a time from this exception we are going to get the cause which is the throwable we can check if this cause is instance of invalid format exception then we are going to handle this error over here otherwise we are going to call this particular method again dot handle method argument not valid and we are going to provide this information here in case it is having this invalid format exception then we are going to handle it in a custom way otherwise it is going to go to the default method handler 
we need the values of this field errors and then the message the message can be a fixed value invalid type and now we just need to prepare the field error if we just look at the path it gives us the json path at this moment we have the book detail that contains the joiners attribute it is also possible that we have one object within that we have another object and then the attribute which is the problem this path will have all the elements in the list from the top then the child element we need to iterate through all the fields and finally we will be able to get the specific attribute that we need to use from here iterate through the stream and then map it and within the path we have the json mapping exception dot reference from this reference object we will get the field name and now we can just combine them ters dot joining so it will join all the elements of the path if we have a object then b then c and d so a dot d dot c dot d this is what we are going to get over here so this is our path in our case it will be joiners put that into the hash map field errors and field errors dot put and i'm just keeping this complete path over here the value would be invalid value so this has to be a string and string this is our output rerun this application so now you can see message invalid type and here value is invalid value for joiners i'll fix this value fiction and then invalid value for language and if i fix it again say we have hindi then it is going to give us the response all the exception those are defined over here you can handle them in your own ways now there could be one of the possibility that the errors that you are getting is not one of the response entity exception handler for example here we have the book controller and within this we have one api get book if book does not exist by that id then it is going to throw the missing record exception and this is the runtime exception that we have for our example we have this get book api here we have some random number for which we need to get the book again it is going to default handler exception resolver it is not even going to response entity exception handler because response entity exception handler does not have exception handling for missing record exception here we have got the 500 internal server error our requirement is whenever we have such kind of issues where data is not available in the database for a specific resource then we can return either no content or we can also return 404 not found to handle such kind of scenarios we need to implement our own method with our own exception handling annotation let's add handler within our api exception handler we can define one more method the method is going to return the response entity and let's give it a name handle missing record exception so this method takes one parameter which is the exception type in our case it is missing record exception whenever this missing record exception will be triggered it will call this particular method for that we also need to provide the at the rate exception handler this will be of the exception type missing record exception dot class from here we need to return the response we don't have any header just keep it null this status right now it is coming as 500 let's pass 404 not found in this case we don't have any field error because request body is correct but the data issue is there here this code can come from the exception itself if we have additional attribute here then we can pass it from our service or any other layer from where we are throwing the exception for now we will keep it as the fixed value say 102 and then the message this is the message that we want to show within our message object this we can read from the exception itself so here we have exception dot get message rerun the application here now it is returning the response book not found with id this and then the field is null similarly if there is some kind of exception like constraint violation exception or any other exception you can define as a method in your exception handler class and you will be able to handle the error there can be multiple advices like here in our case we have one api exception handler similarly in your application you can have multiple controller advices here we can add one of the attribute at the rate order within this order you can define any integer value like one two three four based on the minimum order it will pick that then accordingly it will pick the next handler in the order if you want your exception handler to have the highest precedence you can define the highest precedence this will be the first handler that will be assigned and then it will pick the other handler that you have in your context
This is it from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.